From Tokyo this morning, we have Nicholas Smith, Japan's strategist at CLSA, joining us on the program. Uh, Nicholas, let's talk about this uh, opening here for the Nikkei 225. Uh, we have futures not pointing to much downside, so 1% uh, losses. Is this considered a good start to the week for Japan? Sorry, second. Is this considered a good start to Japan on the week, considering we had, what, 2% losses across the board in the Asia-Pacific on Friday, and Japan playing catch-up to those declines? Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, the, the global markets took a complete spanking over the last, uh, the last week, and uh, uh, Tokyo was taking that time off. So um, you would have thought that Tokyo could well be off uh, a few percent today, and uh, it hasn't been. And I, I suppose one of the main reasons for that is that uh, the market is absolutely dirt cheap at the moment. So that, that's what I'm trying to get uh, investors to concentrate on the moment. I, I'm giving a story of uh, this is the year of the longboat, this is the year of, uh, of plunder and pillage where, um, where M&A really takes off in Japan. And it can do that because the valuations, particularly those related to M&A, are very, very attractive indeed. Yeah, and of course we're seeing recovery as well from the massive earthquake in March. Uh, so let me ask you this. During times of uncertainty, say, in the uh, last quarter we had investors going to Japan as a safe haven play, but it seems like every asset, every benchmark, every market is being sold off right now in this uh, round of selling. Yeah, I mean, we, we've, taken, um, we've taken pain on that, obviously. Um, Japan's a function of, uh, of global trade. Um, and I, I've been trying to say to people, they tend to look at things like uh, yen euro and say, well, this company doesn't look as if it's uh, terribly exposed to that. I'm saying, well, yen euro is moving because uh, a third of the world's economy is in the tank at the moment. And there are very few companies that are, uh, that are not exposed to that. So um, I'm encouraging people to look at the... Um, the correlations there and look, uh, watch out for stocks that have been highly correlated and highly geared against the, uh, the yen euro at the moment. Um, yeah, but, let's talk about as I say, currency. We've got a, Sorry, I'm going to jump in there, Nick, let's, uh, because currency seems to be uh, possibly a mover of markets today as we have the yen weakening. Do you expect this trend to continue? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I nailed the, uh, the strength of the yen over the last um, year, year and a half pretty much. I think we're probably about as far as we're going to go on the, um, the yen, yen euro, yen dollar. Um, people have got extremely worried about the impact that's going to have on the economy, but uh, what I've been drawing people back to is to look at the, uh, the real exchange rate, which adjusts for the fact that we've had deflation in Japan while other people have had uh, inflation. And the result of that is that uh, the, the, the real effective exchange rate for Japan is a full one-third weaker than when it was at the peak in April of, uh, of 95. It's actually weaker than the, uh, the average of the last, last 30 years. So companies are out there going, oh, it, hurt, it, it, it hurts, it hurts. And partly what they're trying to do is a, uh, as a game theory that says you complain about the pain and it helps you to hold prices while your import prices uh, go down or, or perhaps even get a, a price hike. Okay, so Nicholas, uh, what do you buy into in uh, Japan then? Do you buy into the exporting names at this point, or where do you look for safety? Well, what I've been saying to people is, you know, you listen to the, uh, the economists and they've got a pretty Eeyore kind of view of things. Of it. It's all going to be horrible for as far as the eye can see. So I say, well, let's, let's go for an Eeyore portfolio. Um, at this stage of the, the economic cycle, you want to look at companies that have a lot of cash and throw out a lot of uh, free cash flow. So I'm looking at uh, uh, enterprise value to, uh, to free cash flow yields. Picking out companies that jump out on that, um, things like NTT and uh, um, Family Mart, for example. Uh, okay. And on top, that, that's an ex it's an extremely good quant strategy. And of course, those are the kind of companies that will get bought out. And there's something like a 25% okay. premium for buyout in Japan now. So there's, there's another 20% of special source. <clears throat> All right. And Nicholas, uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts on this Monday. Have a good week. Nicholas Smith of CLSA joining us from Tokyo.